to the shop that's not the shop. So we had a viewer ask us to do a little tour tor tutorial. Tutorial? I can't talk again. That's all right. Uh, we'll get through it. Anyway, on these little puzzles that Lisa makes, and she asked us if we would be willing to show her how it's done, and we are more than happy to get back to our viewers and we'll do this. We don't have a patent on anything. This is all Lisa's design. So these are little puzzles. All the pieces come out, and it helps the child learn their name. It also gives them a little hand-eye coordination practice to put the pieces into the spots where they go. Lisa paints them up with pastels and child-safe paint. And when you cut these out, you have scrap pieces left over that basically eliminates the use of this board. So rather than scrap, she also came up with turning these into some coat racks for the children. So kind of a cool little idea. So I'm going to go through the computer programming with the computer. I'm going to show you on screen how we do this. Um, then we're going to take you out to the shop. We're going to show you how the CNC machine cuts them out. We're going to show you how Lisa paints them. We're going to show you just about everything we can, as detailed as we can, so that if you have a CNC, you can make these. And you also could do it with a circular, not a circular saw. You think you could do it with a circular saw? No. How about a scroll saw? You could do it with a scroll saw. At any rate, let's jump on the computer and see how it's done. Let's get started. Okay, folks, so the first thing we got to do is locate the carbide create icon and open that up. And there we have it. All right. We go to the little cog in the left corner and we check the size of our stock. It should be 18 by 4, and that's correct. We use half inch MDF. We're going off the top. Also correct. We use the lower left for the point of origin. Our material is MDF. Our Shapoko XXL is correct. And we go down and we hit OK. Next thing is to put our text in, so we go over to the text icon, open that up. We use Arial Black for the letters, and then of course we type in our text, and in this case we're going to write the word Jacob, that's our baby boy. We're going to use him as a scapegoat here. Pull his name into the center, and then we adjust the size. This takes a little bit of trial and error to get it to what we like. As you can see there it's going to be too short so we will try another number. Um, 15 seemed to work well with this one. 15 inches wide and it holds holds the same uh, aspect ratio so we now get it as close as we want in the center and I'll go over and select the circle because with Carbide Create you need two items inside the workspace in order to center it on the work. All right, so we'll click on one, hold shift and click on the other. The icon there to center it. We'll use center to everything, which will be the middle one there. We'll click on that. And then it dawned on me that I didn't use a line to stock. So we'll go back through that process again, which is click on the name, then click on the circle, holding shift down, obviously. Go down and click that. Now right here it says align to stock. You want to click that hit done and away you go everything should be in the center now delete that circle you don't need that any longer now we'll start doing some tool paths and it's a very simple tool path in one case you cut all the way through to get your parts in another case you just cut a, a shallow pocket which that's what we're going to do here we go to contour check the tool we use an eighth inch end mill on all of this We'll go down here, we're going to do a pocket, and we are going to use a depth of 0.25, which is a quarter of an inch. Our stock height, if you remember, is one half inch. We'll go down, I'll name the tool path, and that's arbitrary, you can name it anything you'd like. I try to make it as clear and concise as I can, so that I don't have to look on the screen and go, am I using the correct icon? So, hit OK. Now you have just created the pocket that the piece is set into. Now we'll just highlight it again and we will go to um, check the tool again. We will use no offset in this case. Using the eighth inch end mill and no offset will create a sixteenth inch space for the letter to sit in between the pocket and the actual letter. And I'll go through and here you can see that I'm adding tabs, which you need to do, otherwise the pieces will fly out. 
We don't want to do that. Check the tab width, check the tab depth. I like to use 0 0.20 when I do this. Hit OK. You can see the tabs are in place now and that's good. We'll slide down here in a moment after I do some double checking on everything. And because we're cutting these through you want to use stock bottom. Again we'll name it anything that you'd like to name yours. I use Jacob's name and then I call them puzzle parts. That helps us differentiate between the pocket and the, just the pieces when we're doing this milling. So we will start to save the g-code now. We will disable one and enable the other. We're using MDF. I don't care about those two selections. I just want to see when I hit simulation here that I definitely have the pocket for the letters to sit into. And you can see that that's done. So we will hide the simulation or save g-code. You can do either or. It doesn't matter. The important thing for us is we like to save to the desktop. We'll name it again. Something that is not confusing when you're looking for it on the desktop. That's why I'm, I'm precise about this or I, you know, I say puzzle pocket because I know that tells me that that is not the actual letters. That's the board with the shallow depression that allows the pieces to sit into. And we'll disable and enable the other one so that we can save the g-code in this case. Show the simulation and here we have the letters that are actually going to cut out and you can see the tabs right here and so on there, 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 and there and we can keep going. Alright, that's correct. Hide simulation or save g-code. You can do whichever you prefer. Again to the desktop. This time we'll call it Jacob Puzzle Parts so that when I look at the file on my desktop I know which is which. We'll save that. Hide the simulation. That's really not necessary. I'll enable these two so they're both enabled. But when we load it into Carbide Motion, that doesn't matter one way or the other because they are separate files at this point. And here we're going to save the actual design of this piece. And if I can recommend anything, I recommend saving multiple times over and over. Here I'm checking to see that yes, they're on the desktop. And you can see we have the NC after the description or the name. And that shows me that that is G-code. So we'll open it back up. Just out of habit, I'll probably save this one more time because Carbide Create does have a tendency to have a few glitches here and there, and we're all aware of that. But I think there we're good. Okay, folks, welcome back to the shop that is the shop, and we're going to get started on this letter tutorial or continue there with. And we've got the stock cut up, we're going to put it on the CNC machine, and we're going to go from there. Before I do, though, I want to make sure you saw the little note in the computer programming video because I made a boo-boo. When I was aligning the material to the stock or the text to the stock, I said hit align to stock and then I hit done immediately. Don't do that. Hit align to stock, go back up on the top and hit align to centers like I showed you just in the previous step. That way the text will jump where it needs to, then hit done and you're good to go. Secondly, number two. You saw me put the tabs in. I didn't put any tabs in the center circles of like the O for Jacob or the B for Jacob. If you don't put those tabs in, that center section is going to fly out. Remember to put your tabs in where you need them. All right, let's get going with this thing over here. We'll load up the machine, load up the program file, and we'll start rocking and rolling and see what we cut out. So we've loaded the material into the machine, we've zeroed the bit, changed the bit, zeroed the bit. We've got the computer set up, ready to go. 
All I've got to do now is hit the go button on the computer, put my dust shoe on the bottom of the spindle, and keep my fingers crossed that we've done it right. Let's see what happens. Okay, y'all, there you have it. We have the pocket that the letter's set into. Now, a little trick for you, additionally. If you draw a line right here on your waste board, like so, and you put your next piece in, remove this one, put your next piece in, and line those lines up, you don't have to re-zero your machine. It's already re-zeroed? Re no, it's already zeroed. So, Remember that before you take your first piece out, mark where the next one goes and it'll save you some time. Now we're looking for Jacob Puzzle Parts this time and it's right there. Now if you watch the time change you'll know that you've loaded a new file. It's at 1 hour 36 minutes for the previous file. Now it's 35 minutes, so I know it has loaded a new file. And I will hit start job. I will hit start. One more time. Turn the machine on. Like so. This is the part that I don't do because I don't have the patience for it. This is the clean up and the sanding portion of this. And what I'll do, I'll actually take these and take them over to the power sander and get rid of them little um, tab ends. I will do that, but Lisa does a splendid job of clean up on these things. Can I see if this fits? Look at that. It does. All right. Now, also, if you're looking at this thing, you'll notice this is not the right one. Let me grab the other one for you talking about the coat rack now here is the coat rack okay now you'll see that it has no holes for the pegs I made a mistake when I did the programming Lisa just pointed that out to me but where there's a way there's a will she gets these pegs off of Amazon I believe is that correct Lisa yes sir she gets these pegs off of Amazon so what we can do in this case is take a three inch drill bit and drill a hole there for a peg and there for a peg just because you forget to put them in the program doesn't mean you can't put them in later. But typically you would 
program that into the file using a pocket cut, stock bottom, and whatever the diameter is of the peg that you're using. But I'll take you over to the drill press and show you how I wreck one of these things. I mean, put the pegs in one of these. how you make these crazy puzzle letter things that Lisa's come up with. I thought I'd drop one. She didn't drop one, but anyway, uh, here's the base, and just for a little bit of comic relief, I told you that you could drill these out after you got done if you forgot to put them in the program. You can drill them out, but you should drill them and drill them the right size. If you drill them too big, the peg goes right through. That's my bad. Oh well. I hope you got something out of this tutorial. I hope you liked the video. I hope you give us a comment, subscribe, share the video. We always love to do all that good stuff. And as always, we'll catch, catch you on the next one. one.